welcome to a lecture series on real analysis. In this lecture, we are going to prove every case is compact. Let us get into the proof, but before that, the point that you have to remember, the point that you can remark from this theorem is that if you are considering a Euclidean space. Whenever I say a Euclidean space, it means RK. The set RK is defined with the standard Euclidean metric. Okay, this has to come to your mind. Under this metric in this space, the cases, which means if you are considering in the one dimension, your intervals. Okay, if you are considering in a two dimension, you you are going to get some rectangles. Right? If you are considering in a three dimension, it is going to be cubits. All these are compact sets. You don't need to examine with the help of the definition, you can directly come to the conclusion that these are compact sets right that is the idea that we are going to prove in this theorem at the end of the theorem uh, it is a proven result we can make use of this idea okay that i have told in prior sense uh, let us get into the proof uh, okay let me choose i be the case okay in RK okay if I am choosing this is the case if this is going to consist the points of what form then it is going to consist points of this form where x1 x2 xk where uh, xi lies between some ai and ba and this is true for all i from 1 to k okay this is the case Right now, what am I going to do is that I am going to define some delta, some value here, with the help of this a is and b is, b a minus a i whole square. Right, uh, taking the summation i is from one to n. So what I have done here is I have just made a point A to B, A1, A2 till AK and B to be the point B1, B2 till BK and I just found the distance of A minus B or B minus A. I have identified the distance and I have named the distance to be some delta here, right? So with this, what we can say? So here what i have done is that in each axis this is a case right if you are uh, considering this to for example let me tell you in three dimension if you are uh, considering three dimension sense this is your a1 a1 b1 and this will be your a2 b2 and uh, this will be your uh, sorry this is your a3 and this is your b3 right so just for simplicity purpose I have taken all in a positive sense you may take it in the negative sense as well if you are going to do so you will have to make your imagination to see what these things are right because you can take the uh, some corner of your room to be the origin and uh, x axis y axis and the z axis if you are considering everything in a positive sense you can imagine things inside the room if you are taking something in a negative since you will have to go to the next room or to the ground or to the uh, first floor or something like that, right? So here, these things A1, A2 and A3 together if you consider the corner of the room to be your origin point, your A point is going to be something somewhere here, okay? Your B point may be somewhere here, okay? This are considered in space, I am just finding the distance of these two points and taking that to be my delta if you see this is the maximum distance of any two points inside that case suppose you have uh, in three dimension i said uh, a cuboid is a case right so uh, this may be my a and this may be my b okay this may be right so this is the maximum distance inside this so whatever may be the points that you choose between choose inside this cuboid or on the cuboid this can be the maximum distance so what we can say the point that i have said just now is to be written in the 
notations okay then absolute of x minus y is less than delta okay it is not only less than delta it is less than or equals to delta whenever x and y are taken in the case l i okay this is the case so by assuming i is a case l and we define this thing and we have this thing hereafter only we are just uh, going to say what we are going to do in this theorem we will have to prove what we have to prove this i is compact okay what is the definition of a compact for every open cover we must have a finite sub cover right that is what we are going to check here for that uh, here also we are going to prove this by the contra positive approach that is suppose i is not compact which means every uh, okay let me uh, i am assuming not compact right so that which means there is some open cover which have do not have finite sub cover right so suppose g alpha is an open cover of uh, i which do not have finite sub cover so this is the assumption that we are making now right okay with this just make a pass here and come here i am putting cj to be my aj plus bj upon 2 right in order to explain i am coming to three dimension case okay only for explaining i am coming to three dimension case so that you can understand what is happening there and you can extend the idea to general cases okay so supposing this is me a1 b1 a2 b2 a3 and b3 for this this c1 c2 c3 this is the midpoint right c1 c2 and c3 okay after this divide aj bj into two intervals aj cj and cj bj so now it is turning these things into two two intervals in each axis i have two intervals now so uh, having a1 b1 a2 b2 and a3 b3 i had a cuboid after dividing how many cuboids i am going to have that is what we need to check okay supposing if i am considering only in one dimension what will happen i will have two right supposing this is happening in two dimension this is going to be my rectangle that is my two cell is going to be this after dividing i will have after dividing in one axis i will have two parts after dividing in two things i am going to have four parts so when my k value was 1 i get 2 when my k value was 2 i get 4 when it is going to extend to three dimension case how many uh, cuboids i am going to have you can examine here uh, you are just going to extend these things right so assuming you have a cuboid uh, here you can see uh, suppose i am just showing you the two dimensions only right uh, this is a three dimensional object but i am showing you in a two dimension sense okay i am making a horizontal uh, vertical split what happens the entire cuboid is getting into two parts okay so whatever i deal with these things it is to be multiplied with two right so now here uh, i have split a vertical uh, thing one in one direction i have made a split now in the another direction i am just going to make a split this is to be split in two things right so two times of two is going to take the place here we have three dimensions right so uh, 
this thing okay uh, initially we have made the split into two things then again two things two times of two now in the third direction also we are going to make the split this is going to give you two so two times of two times of two and that is going to be eight it is what it is two cube right so that is the idea that we are going to have here after splitting like this then what are we going to get then we get 2 power k k cells right so this is what we are going to get okay let us name the k cells to be q i if we make the union of all these k cells we will get the entire i because the entire i we have split into several things okay here what is the assumption that we have made this i is not connected that is some open cover of i do not have a finite sub cover for this i i don't know which part is not covered by a finite sub cover that is why i have split the entire k cell into several things okay out of this 2 power k cells at least one of them is not going to be covered by finite sub cover okay let me choose that thing okay here i am saying at least one of these k cells is not covered by a finite sub collection of finite sub collection of what this g alpha okay and let us take i1 okay to be that qi among this uh, 2 power k k cells at least one i am identifying one set of that sort and i am naming that to be qi okay so with this only we are going to continue the thing okay now your i1 is a k cell uh, that has some coordinates like uh, the things that we have discussed just before and the same idea that we have done till now can be applied to i1 as well right if you apply the same idea to i1 you can split that i1 into again 2 power something k cells uh, one of one among is not going to be covered by a finite sub collection so in this way you are going to get a sequence of cases right uh, that is we next are going to subdivide i1 and identify i2 then we are going to get a sequence of uh, cases with three properties okay uh, the first one is going to be i contains i1 because all those collection is going to form union those union is going to form your entire i so i contains i1 this i1 contains i2 and it goes this way we are subdividing the process is going on because we have assumed this i is not covered by a finite sub collection so the process can be kept on going right so it is going this way right in this in between any of this i n is not covered by by a finite sub collection of g alpha okay now it is an important question to note what is the uh, length that is the maximum distance in each i n we have identified the maximum distance in i was delta we have found the distance and named it delta right so uh, when you split that into two things uh, okay in one dimension what is going to happen the distance is going to be halved which means half times of delta is going to be the case right when it is in uh, two dimension case it is going to be half times of half delta that is delta upon 2 power 2 when it is in three dimension we will have half times of the 
delta upon that is half times of delta upon 2 square so it is going to be delta upon 2 power q so when you extend the same idea in general i n it is going to be delta upon 2 power i n right so that is the third point if i take two points x and y in i n then what absolute of x minus y is going to be less than or equals 2 power minus n delta or i may write this to be delta upon 2 power n ok so this is the case now here what are all these these are all cases right in the previous lecture we have seen if we have a sequence of cases then what the intersection is going to be non empty right so using that theorem uh, this gives you what some x star is a member of i n for all n right so n can be any integer so this is going to be the case right now this is an i n and we have said that the collection g alpha is an open cover of i right so this x star must be a member of some g alpha i don't know what that member is but it must be a member of some g alpha okay so for some alpha this x star is a member of g alpha okay and since this g alpha is open by openness what do we mean this x star is an interior point of g alpha right it is an interior point of g alpha which means there exists some positive radius such that here we are talking in rk which means standard euclidean metric is dealt such that absolute of y minus x star less than r that it is going to happen uh, implies this y is a member of gn sorry g alpha right so because a point all those points satisfying this condition is contained in g alpha which means all the points satisfying this condition will be contained in g alpha right so we have written that now uh, using the third condition let me choose n to be a larger value this n can be any larger value right i am choosing some any i am choosing a larger value n okay choose larger value n such that this 2 power minus n delta is less than n ok uh, it is like uh, using the Archimedean property right so I have a positive radius and this quantity is also going to be positive ok for some larger n I have to choose something like this ok if this is so using the third condition what I can have I can have all the points here okay that is x minus y less than 2 power minus n delta which is less than r so this is r all the points in i n will satisfy this condition that implies this this means what uh -huh. your x belongs to g alpha for all x in i n so this is what you are having now so this is going to imply what let me erase this part because I need these things to explain now ok so uh, this gives you what your x belongs to g alpha for all x in i n this implies your i n is contained in g alpha here what is this alpha this is for some alpha I have not chosen all the points that I have fixed I have chosen some alpha such that the point x star was a member of this g alpha 
right so this is the case this minus what this is only one set your entire in is contained in one set here this means what ins covered by a finite sub collection sub collection of what sub collection of the open cover g alpha this contradicts what this contradicts the second condition therefore what the assumption that we have made is wrong what was the assumption that we have made no finite sub collection of g alpha is going to cover i right therefore uh, this gives you what uh, every open cover of i has a finite sub cover and hence i is compact i was the i was any arbitrary kessel that we have chosen in rk and we finally proved that is compact this completes the proof we have come to the end of this lecture if you have any queries you can post it in the comment section that will be clarified within 24 hours after thank you for watching